How do I find the right balance between striving for improvement and being content with who I am and what I'm doing? Do you know how to ride a motorbike? Cycle? Bicycle? Exactly like that. When you want to have balance, you will definitely have it. You can have it. Got it? Just this, I want to have balance my life. This thought itself is good enough. You are already balancing. You are moving in that direction. Yeah. This question simply arises, how do I do it? You know you can do it. Ask yourself. Your consciousness will tell you, I have not balanced. I am missing out on this. Your consciousness will say. Then you listen to your consciousness. If you are attending to your work too much, your consciousness will prick. Hey, you are forgetting your family, your wife, your children, your husband. Then you say, okay, you attend to them. If you are attending too much, immersed so much in the family and forget about all other things, then your consciousness will prick. My God, what am I got into? What did I get into? Day and night I am just immersed in this. Uh, family affairs, I'm not being useful to the world. I had to do something, I had to pursue my cause, I had to do justice to my work. That mind will prick, then you do that. But this wanting to keep balance in life, that very thought is good enough. It's like uh, the fuse in the electrical system. You know, you know the fuse in the electrical system? Whenever the electric current surges too much, the fuse will break and save everything else. Like that, that little amount of guilt must be there. Like the fuse in the system. You don't justify your work, but that little bit is okay to have. Like the fuse in a electric, you know about the electrical system? In, in all that electrical board, there will be one small box called fuse. So whenever there is imbalance in current, the fuse will burst and save the rest of the electrical system. Like that in life, a little bit of guilt should is okay, but not too much. Like salt in the food. If there is too much salt, can you eat it? No. Got it? So, wanting to have balance is good to have that. Dear Guruji, after joining <coughs> Art of Living, I don't ever feel necessary to argue with others, but they take it as my weakness. What should I do? Give them a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes stand up and argue. Dearest Guruji, what is embarrassment? <laughs> Do I have to tell you what is embarrassment? <laughs> hmm. I know embracement, not embarrassment. Could you please talk about how one creates his own... If you can em embrace the embarrassment, nothing can shake you. It's one thing that people try to run away from is embarrassment. Yeah? Criticism. A mild form of... Cri embarrassment is a mild form of criticism. A mild form of feeling un uncomfortable. So sometimes we need to get out of the comfort zone, feel that little uncomfortableness. Then, you know, abilities in us dawn. Yes. Dear Guruji, how can we define consciousness? And can you talk about the different levels of consciousness? Thank you. Consciousness is what is what was and what will be. All that is, is consciousness. What is not consciousness, you ask me? I would say nothing. 
Dearest Guruji, what is a good way to accept the death of a beloved? Time will take its own course. Don't try to accept or do anything. If that pinch is there, it is there, it will go away. Just notice as the time moves, time is the biggest healer. It just takes you further, further. And you know, So don't try to do anything. Time will take care of it. Yeah? Or wake up and see everybody is going to go there one day. They took an earlier flight, you are taking a later flight. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> so when some people who have gone already, tell them few years later I'll meet you there. See you. You can say bye for now. See you later in another place. Are all relationships based on previous karma? Yeah. <laughs> it does. You know, sometimes the souls, you don't see it, but I see it. Some soul want to come into the world, it picks up one man and picks up another lady and then creates such an attraction between them. They come closer the moment they have the first child, suddenly all the love disappears between them. How many of you have seen <coughs> such thing happening? How many of you have seen this happening? So after the first child, because the soul had its job to done, it's done, finished. So it came to the world and it's, then it, didn't, it doesn't worry about what the parents do. You know, so suddenly after the first child, people lose all the attraction, isn't it? You might have noticed for many people, not everybody, not always. No, 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 don't think it's for everybody always. In some cases, in some cases, it happens. Sometimes it happens after the third or fifth kid. Suddenly they cannot see each other that much because their personality were artificially brought together by the spirit, by the soul who wanted to come in. So this uh, is a happening. But not always, not every time. Yeah. About 30% you can see. And they definitely end up in divorce, these cases. Because they, they don't match at all, nothing matches in between them. And suddenly one realizes, oh, if we thought we are soulmates for life, then what happened suddenly? All that you came out of that bubble, and suddenly you encounter, oh, that person is totally different, I am totally different, we can never match together. This, this thing comes up. Yeah? But you know, life is like that. Friends become enemies, enemies become friends. How many of you have this experience? For no reason, a good friend suddenly became your enemy. You haven't done anything bad to them, nothing at all. Suddenly they started behaving like your enemy. Isn't it? How many of you had this experience, right? You were at so almost everybody has this experience. You wonder why they are behaving like this. I did only good to them. Similarly, there are people, you have not done any good favor to them. They have helped you a lot. They have become your good friends. How many of you have this experience also? You haven't done anything good to them, but they have started doing good to you. So friends are enemies. It doesn't matter. Your life runs by a different law of karma. <laughs> That's why I put them all in one basket. You know, 
because your 10 years of your friend can become an enemy any time and your enemy can become a big friend to you any time it all depends on you and only your karma <laughs> there is guruji what is the best way to make you happy <laughs> You being happy and make others happy. You know, you don't have to try to make me happy. I am anyway happy. <laughs> but I will be more happy if you can help others. Not just happiness means not giving them a party or giving them some gifts, but giving them knowledge. You know, making them very strong. If you can bring them this knowledge, that would be the best thing, isn't it? Mm. When people listen to Ashtavakra, they say that their lives are transformed. How many of you experienced this? There's 33 tapes. When you listen to it, then your whole outlook towards life changes. Yeah. <clears throat> Dear Guruji, it would be wonderful to have our children grow up happily in this sometimes difficult world. What can we give them beside lots of love when they're still too young for meditation? No, just play with them. Don't try to be a teacher all the time and start teaching them. Learn from them. Respect them, learn from them. Just play with them. Don't get too serious <coughs> with kids. Yeah? You know, I remember when I was a child, when my father would come home in the evening, 7 o'clock, he would leave in the morning, 8 o'clock, come in the night, 7 o'clock. As soon as he comes home, he would just clap. My mother was very strict. She was always being very strict. My father would just clap and just make everybody happy, laugh. He would just make everyone laugh before we all go for dinner. Everybody has to sit together and eat. So before that, he would simply clap, uh, try to tickle you and clap and chase everybody around in the house. Uh, seven, eight people. Everyone should laugh before we would sit for food. You know, the children should be, always don't go on teaching them always. Just celebrate with them, play with them, sing with them. This is the best thing. Otherwise, you always take a stick and say, don't do this, don't do that, don't do da 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 That is no good. I feel you should play with them more. And then you can tell them stories sometime. We used to hear a lot of nice stories. Every day one story. So it's, it's good to bring up children that way, with values. Hmm? If you tell them nice, interesting stories, they will not just glue themselves to the television and sit there all the time. It's good that parents sit with children and tell them a story, you know, and give them a moral. That quality time of one hour even if you spend, or half an hour you spend with your kids is good enough. Don't stifle them sitting with them for four, five, six hours with your kids. The quality time, 45 minutes, one hour you spend with your kids should be very in interesting. They should look for that time to sit with you and listen to story. So that human touch is needed. Today children from the morning they wake up, they sit like this, non-participatory witness in front of the screen. Children sit in front of the television, they go on serving the, surfing the channels and then mother comes, hey, come for food, come for breakfast, come for... And then they just don't move. Sometimes mother has to bring up, <coughs> bring their breakfast in front of the television. This type of culture is no good. Not more than one hour of TV should be shown to children. You should limit that time. Otherwise, children have this attention deficiency syndrome. You know, the brain 
gets so bombarded with all these images it fails to register anything else we cannot attend to anything dear guruji i have no family what can i do to feel less alone come on <laughs> i have given you such a big family <laughs> a world family a true family family which really cares for you yeah don't never think you have no family i am your family okay that's why i come for christmas every year and new year here why should i come mother <laughs> yeah is creative expression necessary for everybody don't worry about everybody <laughs> you want to be creative i think you better be it's good